On February 17th, the UFC descends upon Anaheim, California for an action-packed card that will be capped off by a championship fight for the ages. Featuring one of the greatest champions in this sport's illustrious history, UFC featherweight king, Alexander Volkanovsky. Ferocious, fearless, driven, he is a champion. And standing in his way is a flashy rising star and the young, hungry, undefeated Spaniard, Ilya Toporia. Ilya Toporia is the real deal. I get to show uh, this young kid that there's levels and I am the king of this division. Without any doubt, he never faced someone like me. And I know that I can crush his small head. Volkanovski is at a different battle right now. There is a different game that is going to be played in February when he takes on Deporia. But you gotta be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. UFC 298 is poised to showcase an era-defining night of fights. But above all, will give us a crucial insight into the trajectory of the featherweight title picture. They're not coming here to win a contest. They are coming to absolutely destroy one another. Let's take an inside look into the thrilling main event matchup that will set the stage for a historic event. This world's gonna end and mine's gonna start. Ilya been running his mouth, I'll squash him too. For the past four years, there has been no better fighter at 145 pounds than Australia's Alexander Volkanovsky. Fitness, strength, durability, technique, IQ, total package. I mean, Volkanovsky is a fantastic fighter, man. Undefeated at featherweight in the UFC, Volkanovsky has put together one of the most impressive resumes to date. Historically, most people's time at the top has been very short. And what is it that makes you special that you remain on top after such a long period of time? Man, I think it's just the passion for the sport and the mindset. When Alexander Volkanovsky is on his game, he's as good as anyone in the world. Alex is a rare athlete, martial artist, and fighter combination. He's one of the most impressive champions in the history of the sport. All he wants to do is seek and destroy and to break men. Having clearly conquered the division, taking out anyone and everyone. We knew that he was one of the greatest featherweights, but he separated himself. His attention shifted to the weight class above. The number one versus number two pound for pound fighters in the world. Volkanovski pushed him to the limit. That was by far the toughest test of Mahachev's career. And although he ended up losing on the judges' scorecards in a hard-fought war, he won the hearts of the fans. What Volk did was something that no one expected him to be able to do. The underdog mentality is something Volkanovski has had to endure quite a bit in his career. So being doubted and exceeding our expectations was business as usual. Though after his first loss in the UFC, we were all curious to see how he would bounce back. And all questions were quickly answered as he solidified his status as an undeniable great once again, adding another scalp of elite competition under his belt in the recently crowned interim champion, Yair Rodriguez. Masterfully handled in all realms of mixed martial arts, the greatest featherweight of all time. We know that one of Volkanovsky's most defining qualities as a fighter is his desire to challenge himself in the most difficult ways possible. But this past October, we got a taste of just how daring Volkanovsky really is. Alexander Volkanovsky, my God, one phone call is all that it took. Do you want to jump on a plane, fly to the other side of the world and fight upper weight class against Islam Mahachev in two weeks? A lot of people are like, yeah, he's crazy, but I've got a chance to just shock the world again. His constant thirst for a scheduled fight backfired in the worst way. And now, just four months after his devastating knockout loss, Volkanovski is determined to show why he still sets the standard for UFC featherweights. But the young prospect next in line smells blood. Check it. Ilya El Matador Topuria, the Georgian-rooted, Spanish-bred sensation, is not just any up-and-comer in the UFC. Everything from his lifestyle to fight style exudes superstar charisma. You know where I'll be, standing with the spotlight shining on me. Ilya Topuria is fantastic. 
Not just good, not just next, not just a beautiful record. He is a flat problem. At 14 and 0 in his professional career and 6 and 0 inside the organization, Taporia has found himself in the top five of the UFC featherweight rankings. Did you say you were gonna leave his head as flat as he thinks the earth is before this fight? And I did it. <laughs> Daniel you just keeps saying the same thing. He is so freaking good. I mean, he's so freaking good. He is good. Ilya Taporia didn't just win. Megan, 50 to 42. I don't think I've ever heard that scorecard in my life. The captivating fashion in which he's taken out the majority of his opponents is what makes his resume all the more impressive. And to think that he's only 27 years old and keeps getting better is scary. Tapori is a nightmare. <laughs> he's nasty. What he did to Bryce Mitchell, what he did to Josh Emmett, I was like, nasty. oh, he's scary. Win or lose at UFC 298, he holds the potential to be the new face of the division at some point. We've already seen flashes of star power, especially through his country's support. I'm going to be a superstar, a legend in this sport. I know that I'm going to be the biggest superstar in the UFC because of all the things you are going to see. But in order to keep that up and rise to a new level, he must secure a title to go along with it. The only problem is, to get the title, he must go through one of the toughest men on the planet. I'm coming for that championship belt. I'm gonna take that belt. That's next. Defeating someone of Alexander Volkanovsky's caliber, even considering the vulnerable state we last saw him in, will require a truly exceptional performance. And in the eyes of Taporia, it's not a matter of if he will run through Volkanovsky. It's a matter of when. His war gonna end soon and mine's gonna start. I'm gonna knock him out in the first round, second round. If not, I'm gonna dominate him for five rounds, no problem. But for the experienced champion, his mind is set on brutally delivering a reality check, dismissing any notions of a decline in what many fans believe is his most critical fight. I'm like, yeah, talk your shit. Now I can, you know, I can have a bit of fun with it and, and punch you in the face for it and feel good punching your head through the canvas. This is the type of encounter that brings about the most intriguing thoughts. Some say Taporia is not ready for this challenge yet, while others say Volkanovski's time is at an end. Here's Volkanovski going in against arguably the toughest guy available in Taporia. The way this whole thing went down with the second Mahachev fight, it was a devastating, violent head kick knockout. And now he's gonna have a turnaround. We gotta find out here which direction Volk is going. On paper, this matchup is pretty even. They've got a similar stature, and they're both quick and powerful with great grappling and conditioning. They seem pretty even in regards to what their skill set is. The skill set is boxing, great wrestling, great grappling. They seem to have a very similar skill set. And when someone has one great thing, Volk can match him because he's so well-rounded. How does it look whenever you have two well-rounded guys that are very similar when one has proven to be the best in the world against all the best in the world? Volkanovski's reach and distance management may pose challenges for Taporia, along with his effective jab and leg kicks, and also his fight IQ. This is one of the smartest fighters that I've had the pleasure of watching. He's evolving this sport forward. On the other hand, Taporia has very sharp boxing and Brazilian jiu-jitsu and is extremely hard to trade with in the pocket. He's got fast, powerful combinations and fights with a level of calmness not usually seen in a fighter of his age. I'm a very complete fighter. If you're good at striking, I'm gonna take you down. If you're good at wrestling, I'm gonna knock you out. Doesn't matter for me, I promise. You're screwed everywhere. This is the definition of an era-defining fight. Either the great reign continues down its dominant warpath, or we witness a passing of the torch and begin a new era at 145 pounds. Sometimes being uh, delusional and cocky can, it's okay as long as you're putting the work in. I just don't think he's as good as he says he is. One punch, he's gonna be at my ball's height.